This video is going to show how themes work in Emulation Station 2, which came out in about July 2014. Previous to that, the themes were in a different format, version 1, so those old themes won't work with Emulation Station 2. I'm going to look specifically at RetroPie's uh, use of Emulation Station and the themes, but the basic principle would work with any installation of Emulation Station. So first I'm going to navigate the directories with FileZilla, um, you can use any FTP client and it's just going to be quicker and easier to see the folder structure. So to connect you just type the IP that your Pi is connected to, user Pi, password Raspberry, hit connect and it should uh, drop you into the, home, the Pi home directory. So the first folder to look at is outside this actually, so if you go to the root, double click here, um, just the slash there, and we're going to go into the ETC folder, and in the ETC folder, if we scroll down here, we'll have an emulation station folder. Inside here you can see there's a the themes folder, and that's where they're kept. Uh, double click in there, you can see that by default in the RetroPie 2.3 version, there's just one installed, and it's called simple, but you could put multiple different um, theme folders here. So if I double click into simple, you can see that there is in the in the simple directory a simple.xml file which um, gives an outline for that theme and you can edit that. If I hit view edit you can see here a uh, basic outline. Um, there's various sort of details and you can see it's the author is Nils and he's got a web page here uh, blog.nilsbyte.de and uh, this address here emulation station hyphen v2 hyphen emulator hyphen front end he gives an overview of the changes that happen in version 2 and um, the process from getting from the original to the much improved second version. It gives a good outline of um, how the themes work now and the format of the images that are needed and uh, the process he followed to get through there. No doubt you can contact him from his page there as well. Um, separately, going back to that XML file, you can see there's various settings mainly around getting the size and the positioning of the, all the boxes appearing exactly where you want. There's quite a lot of detail there. And in terms of documentation for this, the um, best page is on Emulation Station's um, source control section itself, this uh, address at the top here. I'll try to put all the addresses in the comments so you don't have to um, copy these out. But you can see here on this themes.md page here, it's got a pretty detailed um, description of what all the nodes and the settings in the XML file do and I'm pretty sure this is specific to version 2 but either way the nodes um, often mean the same anyway so it should be of use if you're going to tweak your own one or change um, settings to create a new theme but the easiest and um, most simple change that most people would want to do is simply change the images used and to do that if we go back to the FTP client you can see in this directory um, that we're in simple. If I pick, say, SNES for example, so you can see that my path is currently etc emulation station forward slash themes forward slash simple forward slash SNES. Um, we've got the theme.xml which exists in each individual system being emulated, um, so you can customize the artwork there. And if I open that, you can see in the theme.xml it references where should the um, blur background be, and I'll open that in a minute, and what's the location and name of the name of the system, which is a vector graphic format .svg. And you, they're both in here. So you could simply swap that blur image and that vector graphic image, and it would get an updated view. And if I view that now, you can see there's the background blurred of the snares, which you can just replace. It's in this directory here. Um, you just swap your system to change that particular area there, this happens to be the SNES and the SVG file, I think my Internet Explorer for whatever reason opens this and you can see that's the size and um, spec of the image so you could uh, create your own without too much problems as long as it's the same format as this one um, with a, a vector graphic editor and just going back to the blur image here you can see it's a JPEG and the size is 1920 by 1080 so that needs to be kept the same to make sure the, the view is um, the same when you change these. And you can do that per um, system. So you just go in there and make those changes. So changing the images is the easiest approach, but you can change the XML file as well to get a lot more control about how the theme looks and feels. 
and the path for that is ETC emulation station theme simple. Um, you can see at the oh, not too far there. Uh, you can see at the bottom there. That's the location of the file, and you can read that in conjunction with the reference um, document here. And also um, on the Raspberry Pi forums themselves, there's a bit of a comment from uh, the author of Emulation Station about the changes that have happened. Again, I'll put that link in to help you um, design your own. And as I said earlier, there are a lot of Emulation Station 1 themes available for download, but not very many T themes. The Pet Rock block, um, obviously geared at the Retro Pi side of things, has got a forum for the number, uh, version 2 themes, but there's very few here, and they're just tweaks to existing ones largely. There's not an awful lot there at the moment, but hopefully that'll grow but that's definitely a worthwhile address to check out for any more themes that you've got. So back to the um, FTP client, you can see the directory structure here. Another useful folder in relation to themes is under the home directory, so the one it initially puts you into, home, pi, and then the hidden folder, dot emulation station. And inside here, you've got a configuration file, es underscore input dot cfg. Now if I edit that, there is one reference here um, to the theme that's being used. Oh, I've opened input, I don't want input, I want ES underscore settings. Open that file and you can see we've got string name theme set simple. Now you can manually change that to the folder name that we were in a moment ago to a different theme to set it, but you can also change this through the emulation station interface itself, which we can um, go through in a moment. So it's another way of uh, just changing which theme you're using if you want to experiment with a few different ones. So that that directory is quite useful. Home pi emulation dot emulation station, and then it's the es underscore settings dot cfg. Uh, you can edit this in the FTP client if you want, or you could just um, use a terminal session and edit it there with the nano command. And you've probably seen in other videos how to edit a, a text document. Um, lastly, there is another file that's worth looking at in um, Pi folder again. If I scroll down into RetroPy Setup and Tools, there's a script here called um, Create Themes Download. And by the looks of it, once you've created your um, edits to that simple theme, if you run this script, it would run through and automatically generate a compressed version of that theme. So you have a single file um, to give other people if you want to say hey try this theme out it just compresses all of the files into one um, sort of compressed zip and you can hand that out quite easily so what I'll do is just go into that um, Raspberry Pi with using a putty session uh, using this IP putty just um, gives me access to the terminal so I don't need to plug it into the tally and um, press type my IP address in port 22 hit open and it says what's my username which is pi and password raspberry and once we're in there we can just go to that folder we were looking at which was in the retro pi setup folder in there it's the tools directory and in there you can see it's called um, bah, 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 it's called create themes download so if I go full stop forward slash create um, themes download.sh and if I run that it's checking to see what directories exist now in my simple theme I don't have the Dreamcast setup so the script's having a bit of a complaint and we'll just really quickly have a look at that script and you can see what it's doing um, sudo nano create themes download and at the top here it's just putting all of these files together um, and you can see these are the ones it's looking for so you can always just take the line out if yours doesn't exist and then down the bottom once it's got all of those files there's just a series of um, instructions to tell it to compress it up zip it up into a file and it would put it in this directory here so which is the home forward slash home forward slash pi and you just get a single file appearing in there to compress it so that's a really basic overview of how that themes um, works in Emulation Station 2. It's obviously easier just to start by editing the images and see how that looks so you can get a bit more of a customised approach but you could read the documentation on this website and um, really edit the XML files to get a, a, a very different look and feel. And what we'll do now is just open up Emulation Station and we can have a look at um, the theme controls within that.
When you open Emulation Station, you get the central white strip showing you the vector graphic name of the system you're emulating, Game Boy Advance, MAME, NES, and that's the file that we saw earlier. And you can see as you move along in the background, that blurred image loads up in, in the back there, so you can get the one per system, and it's uh, just going along as you scroll there. So changing those images is the, the sort of first initial easiest step. And you can see when you go into one of these and you navigate into, it's still using the theme system and it's got setting the colours, setting the border areas, setting where each individual um, item would appear, like the game description and all the metadata like developer and publisher and genre saying it should appear in these particular areas. So again, you can go through and edit those XML files, tweak and um, well, just a bit of trial and error should, uh, should start you off to get a better or a different um, theme system. Like I said earlier, there's not an awful lot of um, already created themes that you can just drop in and try, but it's pretty easy to tweak the one you've got. I'd back up the one you've got so you know you can always go back to that if you need to, but these are all the areas that you can change where the game names appear, where the images appear, and everything with the sort of positioning of all the options here. Or um, you could just start simple and um, change the images. Hopefully this sort of brief overview will point you in the right direction for the directory structure and the config files and uh, help you produce something more unique.